So I get asked a lot of questions about IT and how to get into it in certain career questions. So really this video is about just that process of getting in the IT field, what certs to get, what ones not to, what an interview looks like, those types of things. And uh, just to help you out, if you're interested in either transitioning, if you're older and you're transitioning into the IT field, or if you're young and you want to actually get started and you're looking for your first cert, what should you get? So that's what this video is about. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I actually covered my work history. If you're interested in that, I made a video back in January. I'll link it up here in the title card. And really it just went over uh, what uh, my work history was, what all I've done in the IT field. I've pretty much accomplished everything I've ever wanted to do in the IT field, touched pretty much every system I've wanted to touch and uh, accomplished some really great things. So I'm very satisfied and it was very nice to be able to probably transition off that directly into YouTube full time. So that is just my journey. Now, having said that, I don't say that to brag. I just say that to say, hey, no matter what you want to do in the IT field, I pretty much have seen every single career path and really want to just lay those out for you. So starting off, what is the very first cert everyone should get? And this is kind of a controversial one because I never got it. It was as CompTIA A plus cert. It's probably one of the most common IT certs out there. But I had a buddy working and he said, hey, why don't you come over here? Uh, I'll hire you. I know you're really good with computers. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put you in there. And that's how I did. I used it to get my feet wet. Very first experience was in 2002, 2003. So uh, roughly about 17 years ago or so uh, is when I first really started working on computers and getting paid for it. Now, most of that work was actually residential starting off. And then a couple years in, I really wanted to break through into the actual commercial game and, and do servers and those types of things. Now, here's a gotcha. You, nobody's going to let you work on servers unless you have worked on servers. It's total chicken egg scenario. So what I did was I got certified in, I think, small business server back then, small business server 2003, I think is my actual cert. And that's not enough. You actually need to know what you're doing too. So I actually shadowed someone and worked for free learning about server 2000 and server 2003 back then. And I was able to pick up a lot of that knowledge and experience or at least get enough familiarity with it that they trusted me and hired me to do that full time as business. So I didn't have to do the residential stuff. I just did business. And I did that about two years after my initial hire as far as the residential side of things. So this is kind of a big thing as far as this transition. A lot of people get stuck just repairing desktop computers. And I totally get this. And it's a hard thing to break through into, like, let's say, a system admin. And even harder today because system admins I, is not really so much a growth industry because a lot of small businesses and things where you, I got my feet wet just don't longer exist. A lot of it's more bigger business when it comes to servers. And really, you have to start figuring out a way to make that transition. And a lot of times that's working under someone that's really good at a bigger company if you can. And then having the will to learn and I'll get into like the interview and in, in section in that here in a few but uh, the big thing is one getting just the base certs and what those certs I'd recommend are especially if you're going the system admin route is a Microsoft certified systems engineer and before you say anything I know this is a Linux based channel but at the same token, when it comes to business, almost every business runs off Microsoft Active Directory. And if you don't know anything about Windows Server and you don't know anything about Active Directory, it doesn't matter, no, it doesn't matter how much you know about Linux, you're still not going to be great in that role because you just don't know the other piece. So it's really important to be a jack of all trades. And when you get in these jobs, just remember uh, the worst thing you can say is, uh, I don't know, or I, I, I can't do that. Uh, just if you don't know something, don't don't cowboy it. I'm not saying that. Don't just go out and just try. That would be horrible. Definitely say, you know what? I need more preparation in this. 
let me do some more studies and, and figure out the best avenue to approach this problem and I'll get a solution for you. That is probably the best way to go about it. And then go ahead, read the white papers, set up a test lab, figure out what you need to do, and then do your tests in an isolated environment that doesn't affect all your users in production. And then once you're really confident that you got that section down, then you can transition and do a small segment of your production users and then roll it across the whole company. So that's the typical workflow of a traditional system admin or a senior system engineer. That's how they would approach problems because guess what? Nobody knows everything and it's okay if you don't know, just don't do a bunch of tests in production. If you get this opportunity, just say, you know what? We need to do some more testing. Let me go ahead and set this up and then we'll get this problem or problem worked out. and We'll get a good solution. So really important. And also a lot of people, uh, I think, say, hey, that's not my job or that's not my specialty in the IT field. Just kind of push it off. You're really doing yourself a disservice and probably pissing your boss off by saying that. But uh, these things are very common in the IT field. A lot of people are introverts. They have some really wacky personalities. And it's important to be almost a jack of all trades. Don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone. Just remember, test it, uh, learn about it, study it, and prepare. Those are the big things because nobody knows everything. And the more you know, the better you are, the more value you more valuable you are. So just just as an example, I can do Citrix Farms, which means I can do a lot of uh, virtualization as far as uh, deploying a bunch of virtual desktops. So when it comes to virtual desktops and you know doing oh Zen app and those types of things, I can do all of that, which is pretty powerful on its own. That there's a good niche market for that. But on top of that, I'm also a system admin. I have an MCITP, which is a 2008 version of the Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. And then on top of that, I also work a lot on Linux servers and stuff. So I have a little bit of experience. Um, actually a lot lot of experience on all three of these sections so uh, I'm very dangerous in all of it so when someone sees me and they're like oh, okay uh, can you do this I'm like yes because I have a I know all about each one of the systems and it's important to get out of your comfort zone and do that I know you might just want to do Linux system ad admin but the fact of the matter is you will need to tie in with uh, a Windows Active Directory or you're gonna need to use some of the networking aspects. And if you're interested in networking, definitely get like CompTIA's Network Plus, Security Plus, very, very good. And you can utilize these to really break into the network industry. And then probably uh, some Cisco certs because a lot of enterprise level networking equipment, it all runs pretty much Cisco. So you pretty much have to have like a CCNA really to work on these. And that in itself, if you're really interested in networking portion, you could just stay on that because that is a very much a growth industry in the IT field and you will do very, very well for yourself. So these are kind of the whole aspects. If you're looking for system admin work, you're going to have a hard time because you're not going to have a whole lot of experience. So this is a hard one to break into and it's not really a growth field. So you really need to be a good track jack of all trades to really stand out from the pack. When it comes to networking, this is a growth field. You can definitely get in. I'd recommend starting with the CompTIA certs, figuring out, hey, do you like network topology? Do you understand it really well? And if you get a good grasp on networks, honestly, just go ahead, start taking your Cisco ones, and you can just take this all the way till you retire if you want, because it's a, a really high paying industry and growing. And then finally, you have kind of uh, a mix. You have kind of like your leadership path where you go into like IT management. Uh, I've been an IT manager and director for uh, pretty much the past 11, 12 years. And I've seen a lot of stuff and this is kind of weird because uh, I've kind of stayed more towards the small business aspect except when I was a director, I stepped more into a company that uh, had about a half a billion dollars in revenue and that uh, is a lot of stress, a lot of work and I was still doing a lot of the technical things because I didn't have a good uh, system admin under me that knew his stuff. So. That was very, a uh, very challenging position and one I learned a ton of stuff about. That's when I actually got all my Citrix certs <laughs> because I didn't have anybody that really knew Citrix and I needed to deploy a whole new Citrix farm because they were running 
Zen Server 6, and I think uh, at the time it was like 7.9 or 7.11 uh, for Citrix uh, came out for Zen Desktop and Zen App, and nobody knew it. So I actually learned that and deployed it for this entire business. So that is super powerful. I could have honestly taken that and just done that at a whole bunch of businesses, but instead I did a whole bunch of other different things. Then I figured out I really didn't like a uh, big business because long hours, migrations, all these things. Uh, the pay was excellent though. I missed the pay. <laughs> uh, I moved back to more, more small business. So it just depends on the type of person you are. And really when it comes to doing the interview process and once you get the cert, you get the interview, what does that look like? And honestly, I could tell you a bunch of stuff about technical and these things. It just depends on the person. And when it comes to IT, you need to be personable. You need to go in with the plan. You know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you need to have a lot of preparation going into an interview. A lot of people miss on this. If you're not sure of like stock interview questions, definitely watch some YouTube videos about that. If you don't know what your greatest weakness is, you're, you're already far behind. Or if you're unsure about how to answer that question, uh, definitely brush up on how to answer that. But honestly, if you're getting asked canned questions, the interview is probably going south anyways. So uh, what I like to do in preparation for the interview is really three things uh, that I bring into the actual interview. One, I have a copy of my resume, one for me, one for the interviewer. And then I also have kind of like a cheat sheet. This cheat sheet is kind of like all the different scenarios and experiences I've had in my career. And I think about what would happen in that role. I cater that cheat sheet for the role that I'm going for. So let's say I'm going for a senior systems engineer. And those are about 100K, probably on average in the States. I would say for that role, I would go ahead and focus on disaster recovery to show, hey, I can basically take any scenario and fix it. And I'd show my experiences with that and say, hey, I had a raid controller die on me here. We had the raid go out of sync. I had to figure out how to bring those servers back. Uh, I've had uh, a SAN completely crash on me and uh, a lot of the storage corrupt from a bunch of VMs. That is a good scenario to run. And I say, this is what, what happened. This is what I did to fix it. So you say the problem and, and the solution. And you're just trying to bullet point these so it jogs your memory. But what happens is I usually print out two copies of this one too because a lot of times I'll say, oh, this is just my cheat sheet. And the interviewer will go, whoa, really? And you just straight up tell them. I was like, oh, yeah, I, sometimes I forget all the stuff I've done. So I've just written it down here so it'll jog my memory. And they'll take the sheet from me. It's awesome. And a lot of times they'll, they'll take you know that and I'm just sitting there talking to them and they're sitting there reading and going, man, this guy's been through some stuff. I, I love this. And it, then they'll be like, oh, you know what? I, I, like, I want to know more about this problem he had. And they'll ask me a direct question. And when you get into this realm, you really just shine. You really just break out of the pack because they're never going to remember the guy they were asking canned questions to because honestly, you always get the same answer. Oh, you know, uh, organization's not my strong suit or, oh, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I like everything like here. You hear the same crap all over and over and over when you're doing interviews. And really, this is how you break out. And my actual kind of secret sauce for all my interviews because uh, when it comes to interviewing, that is a skill on itself and one that you need to be prepared for when you step in front of them. Now, when it comes to being nervous, a lot of people, uh, especially some, I'm pretty shy actually. If you ever meet me in real life, a lot of times I, I get you know a little shy. It's just who I am. It's something that I try and break myself of because I think everyone's a little shy and ADD and those types of things. And really to break out of that, uh, I, I take deep, deep breaths before I go into an interview because I've, I've got the whole gut just ah, locked up and you're real, real nervous and you don't want to come off like that. So what I try and do before walking into the room is just take three really deep breaths, try and not have any caffeine prior to or, or very little caffeine so you don't want to appear jittery. And come in cool and relaxed or at least appear that way. I'm still definitely uh, definitely nervous, but I try and uh, definitely dispel a lot of that before entering the room because once you get in there, 
you're not going to be doing those deep breaths anymore. A lot of times you might come off nervous and just shaky and just just weird. It's it's not a good thing is a lot of times even if you have the technical chops and you you say, "Hey, this is all the things I've done." you end up blowing the interview because the guy in charge doesn't care about the technical shops. He just wants to make sure you're not a weirdo. And if you come off really weird and nervous, he's going to go, that's not somebody I want uh, on my team. So these are just some tips when it comes to interviews. Don't freak out too much. And probably the final thing about interview before I just say, okay, we're done is know about the company, know about the role, you know, you do do your homework. You remember, preparation is key in everything in IT. You always prepare. No one knows everything. And if you think you do, you know nothing in my eyes. Because I think there's four stages of, of mastery. There's one, the person that thinks they know everything, but really don't even know what they don't even know. That's the worst. And then you have the next person that knows a little bit of something, and they kind of know what they don't know. And then there's the person that knows quite a bit, but there's still a lot that they don't know. And then there's the, like the master, someone that has done that specific thing for decades. And that person has pretty much done it all. But at the same time, when new technologies come out, that person is studying up on them, constantly refining because he knows knowledge only lasts for a year or two in the IT field before it gets old and stale and then it's just no longer relevant or, or not nearly as relevant as it was yesterday. So don't be the guy that says I know everything because nobody knows everything and don't think that you need to be the smartest person in the room because honestly any any person that ever I, I knew that thought they were the smartest person in the room typically were the dumbest person in the room. These things are just applicable when it comes to getting a job and doing it. So when I walk into a room, I think I'm just an average guy that has about middle of the pack chances. I probably going up against people with like-minded credentials, maybe even better credentials. I like to think of myself as the underdog when I walk into a room. And then that's where I really, really shine because it forces me to prepare, be better guarded, not walk in there going, I'm King Kong, I know everything. That's not who you want to be. You want to be the person that thinks they have a lot to learn, but you don't have to say that. You just prepare as best as you possibly can for it. So with all that, that's what I wanted to just say from interviewing tons of people, going through the whole process, doing a whole bunch of different roles. And again, if you're interested in that, check the title card. Um, that's kind of my whole history of work and I absolutely love what I do right now, which is I'm working as an IT manager for a small business. And I do that on the side just a couple days a week. And I do YouTube pretty much full time now. So this is pretty awesome. But at the same token, I still like doing that because it kind of reminds me, like I said, going back to that mastery chart, I think if you don't use those skills, you lose them. No matter how much you talk about it, you still need to actually do uh, the actual work on the keyboard. Otherwise, you just kind of get rusty. But with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.